So as you may know, I'm Alan from RVAcrossAmerica.net, and we're here with Sonora. Uh, Sonora is the owner of Black Sheep Coffee here in Duchesne, Utah. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. I'm doing great, and the coffee is great. Thank it's you. It's definitely good stuff. We try. Got a latte non-flavored today, so it's got milk in it, but no excess sugar or excess flavor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this little interview is kind of inspired by a friend of mine, actually an elementary school friend of mine. Okay. I've uh, known him for close to 60 years, and he referred to this area of Utah as the frontier. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard it referred to as such or yeah. how you respond when, you know, he's originally from Jersey, he's in Florida. Hey, Rick, um, how do you feel about this area being the frontier or really is it, is it the frontier? Uh, I mean, it kind of is. It's different than anywhere else in Utah and it's a lot harsher out here than anywhere else. So there aren't as many people out here, but I mean, it's still just like a regular place to live. <laughs> electricity and yeah, everything, got right? electricity, running water. Running water. <laughs> uh, get deliveries. We have a Walmart. Well, not in Duchesne, but in uh, Vernal. We've got grocery stores and all of the regular stuff you'd have. <laughs> now, to put this in perspective, Duchesne really is pretty much the middle of nowhere. Yes, it is. Um, you were t We were talking the other day about grocery stores, and we're both not real thrilled with Vernal. True. Um, so the nearest grocery store that you like, how far is that? It's at least an hour. Usually we drive two hours and we go out to Salt Lake or to Orem and do like Costco runs or there's like natural grocers if we want to get like all the organic stuff and like not in bulk. So natural grocers in an hour, Costco's at least an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. And to put that in perspective, mileage wise, that's over 100 miles to Salt Lake. Yep. And about 70 to Heber City? I think so, yeah, and then round trip. Right, of course. So, 140 or 200. Right. So, it's an all-day event if we want to go to the store. <laughs> if you want to go shopping for yeah. your celery or whatever, yeah. cucumbers. Um, wow. And how long have you owned Black Sheep Coffee? Uh, three years, and then me and my mom do everything in here. And so... Um, we both came in on the first day, July 12th, 2021, and then we've been doing it every day since then. So so it's been since July 12th, 2021, and I think I probably wandered in here, it would have been September or October of 2021. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I've known you almost as long as we've been open. So. <laughs> like a month or two after. I love it. I'm kind of like a remote local. Yep. Um, <laughs> We recognize you when you come in every time. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And this is a town of 1,600. Uh-huh. Obviously, most of your business, I would think, is locals. Uh, yeah. I'd say like 65%. And then we get lots of people uh, who go to the lake and who go snowmobiling and who go uh, out on side-by-sides. And then people driving to and from Colorado. And the lake that you're referring to is Starvation Reservoir. Yep. And that's about a eight minute drive yeah. from here. That's great. Uh, it is. It is. I mean, I've been. I was kayaking this morning in the water. Okay. Um, there was staying. no wind today. No, not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. Maybe five or ten. Um, and then staying at beach campground, which is you know just literally on the beach, walk yeah. right up to the water, uh, which I can imagine during summer it probably gets pretty crowded. Over there. Yeah, it's pretty crowded during the summer, but not like Monday to Thursday. But then Friday to Sunday, it's always crowded, and then. We don't ever do anything during the summer down there. No, I can imagine. That's we just drive it. down and leave. We don't camp down there. That's why I show up during the yeah. shoulder season. Yep. Um, this year I missed the uh, opportunity to get the half price camping because oh. they haven't winterized yet. But yeah, that's wild. Yeah, he's doing it. I think this week. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, gotta do what you gotta do. So with black sheep, I see there are shirts here and hats and mugs and stuff. Uh, and I'm going to walk around with my um, cell phone and do a little video in the store. Um, I saw a woman bringing those in. Is she a local, and does yep. she make them? Yep, she makes them. She lives 25 minutes away, and she makes all of them, and we sell them on consignment. Nice. Nice. So she actually has her own seamstress set up at home. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, Yeah, she does all of it. So all of our all anything with our logo on it, she makes. 
Wow. Yeah, all of our hats, cups, hoodies, shirt, all of it. It's a lot better than ordering it from a place online, probably shipping it out from overseas and all that. Uh, and I see hundreds of books over there that are kind of laying around. What's the long-term plan on that? We're building bookshelves this weekend. We had them up on bookshelves, but they uh, had damage to them, and so they broke. So they're just over there. But we're putting them up on shelves, and then we sell them. And people bring me books. And, like, if kids come in, I'll give them books if they find one that they like. Or sometimes, like, there's a lady who works for the Forest Service who brings me a book and then takes a book all summer long. And then... Brings one back when she comes back next year. So, nice. there's nowhere else to do it around here, though. So, sure. Now, I noticed you've got the conspiracy table. Yes. Uh, what was the um, inspiration behind that? My mom's the one who came up with it, but uh, we've got that con- that gather sign, and we uh, learned that ravens are called a conspiracy, and people just come in here and talk about all sorts of stuff. So, she may have that sign made, and then we've just been collecting. Different things. People bring us stuff. Someone brought us the Flat Earth map. Some of those books we got when we were going through our books, like the John Rappaport book we got through there. So, yeah, now people just bring us stuff and then talk to us about stuff. And I've learned a lot more than I ever expected to from people. What are some of the topics that come up here amongst conversation amongst the locals? Um, Are there favorite topics that people like to discuss? Skinwalkers, always, because we're just what is it 30 minutes from skinwalker ranch uh politics uh whether or not it's gonna snow this year (laughs) i don't know those are probably the big ones sure and lots of stuff Uh, a lot of people have uh greenhouses out here a lot of people have animals so lots of stuff like that and then we do uh aa in here so a lot of people ask me about that AA and domestic violence stuff. We run a lot of them. Well, I don't run them, but they run them out of here. So they come in every week. So lots of people talk about that in here, too. So you're really much more than a coffee shop okay. at the community center. We try to be. There's nowhere really else in town. You could go to the library, but some people don't feel comfortable going to the library. So I didn't come here. there was a library here. Yeah, it, well, it's closed right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been closed for six months because they're renovating it. So. I see. Yeah, and then there's the there's the event center, but that's, that's mostly horses and center. ranching. Yeah, right now all the firefighters are down there for the Yellow Lake fire. Yeah, this was the staging ground for um, the fires that were just north and west of here. And I understand for a few weeks the air was pretty it rough. Was rough. Yeah, it was rough. It looks, I mean, you couldn't see the sun. For at least four days when it was really bad and the wind was really bad. And then the wind slowed down and then it kind of blew around and went more to Vernal than the year. But yeah, it was pretty rough. Hmm. And with the election coming up, we're recording this on October 21, I think it is? Uh huh. Yes, yeah, 21st. Uh, so that's only two weeks out. Um, I can imagine that a lot of people are focused on what's happening oh, and yeah. uh, appreciative, I suspect, of where they live and, yep. and the safety this area provides. Definitely. Yeah, it's a really safe area because there's, it's hard to get to. Yeah. It's a hundred miles that way to get to anything really. And then mountains everywhere else. So desert and mountains. That's it. That's all we got around here. Yeah. There's at least 30 miles between here and nearest town to the east and heading west. You have to cross up and over Strawberry Park, which would be part of the Wasatch. Yep. Okay. Um, Strawberry Park is up around 8,000 feet. Uh, I know it's got snow on it right now. Yep. Um, I saw it from the from the uh, lake this morning. I've got photos of that that I'll put into the post. And uh, when you cross over that, you get over to Hebron City, which is really the center of the Los Angeles, mm-hmm. uh, because that's where all the ski areas are, the ones you've heard about in Little Cottonwood Canyon, Big Cottonwood Canyon, and such. Um, so it's quite a ways to get to Hebron City, like we said earlier, 70 miles. Yep. Um, <laughs> definitely an isolated area. Oh, yeah. And we all love it because of that. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere else. Are many people here preppers? Oh, yeah. That's why, well, yeah, like I was telling you, a lot of people have greenhouses. A lot of people have animals. Chickens, goats, cows. Uh, there's a lot of, um, like, alfalfa grown up here. Um, but, yeah, everybody, I learned how to can. So, lots of canning. And then, 
I think more people up here probably do than anywhere else I've ever lived. And where else have you lived? California and Salt Lake and uh, uh, Utah County, which is an hour and a half away. Utah County is just south of Salt Lake County, mm -hmm. so it's uh, just one canyon away from all the uh, craziness between Draper and North Salt Lake. Um, <laughs> Tell me. And in itself, it's not a lot quieter. And nope. Utah Lake is an experience because it's got all kinds of horrible algae. In oh, it. yeah, it's terrible. It stinks. We used to live right next to it. And there was algae blooms. They find dead bodies in it all the time. There's... It's not very deep, and it's just mud. It's a terrible lake. So even though it's Utah, it's a world away yep. from Duchesne. Uh, and I take it from all the places you've lived, you probably like Duchesne better? Oh, yeah. Don't want to go back to any of them. Don't want to go back to L.A. Don't want to go back to Utah County. Don't want to go back to Salt Lake. It's the worst. And are people, people, wherever they are, or... Do you notice a difference in the locals? Well, people are people, but you can't be too rude to people because you're going to see them at the grocery store <laughs> or you're going to live right next door to them or pass them every day on your way to work or can't be mean to anybody. Definitely small town. Yeah, for sure. Definitely and I've never lived anywhere town. like that before. So, Anything else you want to share with people who may run across this? Uh, what's the you know, great video channels that we subscribe to? I don't know. There's a lot of oil out here, too. A lot of, I didn't know anything about oil when we moved out here. So if you come out here, it's all tankers all day, every day. I see one stay away from them. <laughs> well, don't stay away from them in a bad way, but, you know, give them their space. But there's enough uh, oil. In the 90s, they did like a, I don't know if you know this, but they did a survey of all the oil that they had, that they had were pumping just then. Those wells, not what they've done from now, from then to now. And there was enough oil to run the entire U.S. for 50 years. So, nobody knows that. So, people come in every time and go, what are all these trucks? Well, they're all oil. All oil, all day, every day. And it never stops. Yeah, there are derricks all over the place. Yeah. I guess that's one of the other things people talk about out here is who's going to win the election. Because it depends one way or the other if they're going to have a job or not. So, <laughs> fracking, oil, all of it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Lots of Absolutely. that out here. I imagine there aren't too many people who have adopted electric vehicles out here. No. <laughs> nope. Ah, we have two diesel. We've got a diesel Volkswagen and a diesel truck. And then all of the work trucks are our diesel. And then we've got a few gas cars, too. But, yeah. No, there's not very many electric trucks out here. Yeah. Out here, diesel is definitely really used. Yeah. For sure. Well, excellent. Um... Thank you for your insights. Yeah. Thank and you. This has been fun, and uh, you know we'll we'll have it posted up on uh, YouTube and Sweet. see what people think. Cool. We'll share it too. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. As we walk into Black Sheep Coffee, you're greeted by a relaxed atmosphere. Sonora is sitting with one of the uh, locals who's a local regular visitor of the uh, coffee shop. You have sofas and love seats to kind of relax in and even a stage where they do occasional uh, evening shows, evening programs. Walking over by the uh, piano, the grand piano, and towards the conspiracy tables or table, You can see all kinds of neat stuff here on the table. Contributed by locals once they got the idea to put this up. You can see a container of, uh, you know what? And books. Books are everywhere. In fact, Sonora's putting up more bookshelves for the books. Uh, these bookshelves here in the back are recently restored. The tables are eclectic with a mix of different kinds of chairs and different kinds of tables. Nothing here matches. More books in the back. And this area is kind of under construction. Yesterday they were painting the ceiling and it looks like there's more work to go. So hence the uh, 
equipment that's in here for construction, ladders and such, more sofas, more love seats. Over here, you've got local swag. These are local vendors who, on a consignment basis, bring things in and Sonora takes the orders for them. These shirts are all made by a local woman. They're not um, ordered online and just, you know, with her logo, this local woman makes them. She brings them in, the sweatshirts too, and uh, you can get your own custom stuff. Warm clothing drive. Mugs, pumpkin spice, and other cotton candies, ski caps, hats, all kinds of neat stuff. But again, this is Black Sheep Coffee. It's on the frontier in Duchesne, Utah. And uh, when I'm in the area, staying at Starvation State Park, or now known as Fred Hayes State Park with Starvation Reservoir. Uh, it's uh, the place I come to. Today is a warm day, it feels like spring, it's late October and they are in the process of removing the um, water systems. They're, dry, they're uh, winterizing at the park and that means the park is also going to half price for camping. Okay. Taking a walk down Main Street in Duchesne, passing by Black Sheep Coffee. It's like a local sheriff out for somebody who's speeding. A couple of businesses that are no longer. It's a groomer place here, dog grooming. This is Cowan's Cafe. They're not open on Mondays. They'll be here tomorrow. I'll probably be in for breakfast tomorrow. Heating and refrigeration guy. Insurance agency. Cross street. You got kind of a general store, Napa Auto Parts, hardware, and then some. You got a pawn shop. There's a bar here with family dining. I think they're out of business. It shows for sale, but it looked pretty complete inside. Mountain America Credit Union, I'm part of that. And this is the, almost the end of the commercial district. You've got Zions Bank, Duchesne River Inns, uh, which is in the process of being, uh, I guess, updated. I think it's been like that for a while. A Mexican restaurant, it's decent. Chuck's Retail Meats. It's actually gotten quite nice out. It's over 60 degrees now in the middle of the afternoon. Family Dollar down the street. There's a uh, Burger King a little bit further up there too. And you got a smoothies and a health food place and a place called Outlaws Barbecue and Grill, which is never open when I'm here. I think it's only in the summer. So they're pretty well done for the season. And that is Duchesne.